10. GLS is go for core, core stage, stage go inertial. Copy. It's now two years almost to the day since the first Artemis launch. Liftoff confirmed. Copy liftoff. Port 109. The first SLS vehicle lifted off from Kennedy Space Center during the local midnight hour on November 16, 2022, finally beginning Artemis 1 and sending Orion to the moon on a highly successful four-week mission. NASA was hoping they would be ready to fly Artemis 2 by this time, but that didn't work out. And in the aftermath of last week's election results, there's now reporting that the Space Launch System program and maybe other parts of Artemis could be under the budget knife by the incoming Trump administration. Hey everyone, thanks for your time. At the same time, as the presidential transition rumors are flying, there are still the two critical 2025 flight tests for Artemis on the schedule. Artemis II and the Starship Spacecraft to Spacecraft Propellant Transfer Demo. I'm going to continue to report on both, even if there are more reports of Artemis changes in the news than updates on the schedules for Artemis II or Artemis III. And well, I'm going to be reporting on all of that, since it could be relevant or related or both. Preparations for Artemis II are continuing as much as possible without a final heat shield decision. At the beginning of the week, a picture of the Artemis II Orion spacecraft back in the altitude chamber was published, courtesy of prime contractor Lockheed Martin. The picture was taken on November 7th, so a second round of vacuum testing to complete all the objectives of the tests could be nearing completion. We'll wait to see that the spacecraft returns to the final assembly and systems test cell in the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building at Kennedy Space Center. NASA KSC Public Affairs also posted some stills of a terminal countdown training simulation that was conducted on November 7th. The launch team was on console in firing room one of the Launch Complex 39 Launch Control Center. A simulation team throws failure scenarios at the launch team as a part of an overall simulated terminal countdown, which allows those procedures and teamwork to be practiced and improved. The Artemis II flight crew also continues to train, and Commander Reed Weissman posts a weekly update on his Instagram account. Those are also picked up by NASA social media. Satisfactory completion of the vacuum tests would be one of the milestones that gets the Orion spacecraft closer to launch preparations which is signified by the handover from Lockheed Martin to Exploration Ground Systems. Even after the vacuum testing is complete, there's a lot of work to do to button up the spacecraft for launch processing. Somewhere in that timeline, the modified spacecraft batteries would presumably need to be reinstalled, and we're waiting to get an update on that. Before that handover to EGS, Lockheed Martin will finish final assembly. Installing the solar array wings, pressurizing tanks in the crew and service modules, installing the forward bay cover on the crew module, and installing the service module fairings. The spacecraft weight and center of gravity will be measured, and it will be placed on a transporter to move to the Multi-Payload Processing Facility, or MPPF, where EGS will begin loading flight commodities on board. That pre-handover work in the ONC building was expected to take a couple of months or so, and one of the questions is how much of that work would be allowed to proceed before a heat shield decision. A question is whether it is still possible to get all that work done and hand over Orion to EGS by New Year's. NASA hasn't updated the target launch date of September 2025, but the sooner critical path milestones are completed, the shorter that September date would be delayed. Orion is the critical path to launch readiness. In the vehicle assembly building and a couple of blocks from there, the SLS hardware for Artemis II is sitting or lying in wait to be assembled for launch. Stacking is on hold for now, still waiting for the Orion heat shield decision, but there is some whispering that we could see hardware moving soon. If that's the case, it's worth going over booster stacking and the stacking clock at least a little bit. Generically, the boosters have a requirement that goes back to their shuttle heritage that the segments can be vertically stacked for up to 12 months. As we saw with Artemis 1, after 12 months, extra analysis needs to be done to extend the stack life. The SLS boosters have a total of 10 solid rocket motor segments, 5 for the left-hand booster, 5 for the right-hand, along with hardware that holds avionics and steering systems. For Artemis 1, which was facing schedule uncertainty due to SLS core stage certification testing, the bottom segments, also called aft assemblies, 
were placed on the mobile launcher a couple of months before the rest of the work continued. The aft assemblies are a combination of the aft motor segments, the aft skirts, a nozzle exit cone, and hardware to attach the bottom of the booster to the core stage engine section. In the case of Artemis 1, and it sounds like it might be on the table now for Artemis 2, putting the aft assemblies on the mobile launcher starts stacking, but it doesn't start the stacking clock. That doesn't start until the first segment-to-segment -segment mate, which is when the left and right aft center segments are placed on top of the left and right aft assemblies. Since those happen one at a time, there's a few days or so between one booster and the other. For Artemis 1, the two aft assemblies were placed on the mobile launcher in late November 2020. However, the stacking clock didn't start until after New Year's 2021, beginning with the left-hand booster. The left-hand aft center segment was lifted from high bay 4, up and over the transfer aisle, into high bay 3, and then lowered down over the left aft assembly on January 7, 2021. A controlled work area clean room was set up to mate the segments, and once they were joined and the weight of the upper segment was transferred to the rest of the booster, the stacking clock started. On January 12, 2021, the same process was repeated for the right-hand booster, lifting the right-hand aft center segment into place and mating it to the right-hand aft assembly. Almost exactly four years since the Artemis 1 aft assemblies were placed on the mobile launcher, the question is whether booster stacking will be paused like Artemis 1, or whether it will continue immediately. In past question and answer sessions with EGS, they had stated that the plan for Artemis 2 was to continue immediately and not pause. However, the Orion heat shield investigation and decision have taken extra time, and that may be a more recent factor. If NASA pauses after the aft assemblies are placed on the mobile launcher, then there's not much schedule benefit maybe a week or two. After that time elapses, schedule margin starts to be consumed again, and the earliest launch date starts to drift again to the right. If NASA continues straight into the rest of booster stacking, the risk is that the stacking clock starts and you end up needing to extend the 12-month generic limit again, like with Artemis 1. The schedule benefit is that there's still a significant amount of work to complete to get SLS ready for launch which includes a tanking test out at launch pad 39B. If that testing could be completed in parallel with Orion launch preparations, that would help with the schedule. Looking at the bigger picture for Artemis 2, the latest from NASA was that they were hoping to have a decision on the heat shield options by the end of the year. That was the word before the election though, and the presidential transition and reports of possible changes to Artemis could color that too. The current appointed NASA leadership will be leaving. A decision before the end of the year would be in this lame duck situation between administrations. If NASA waits another month until mid-January to get guidance from the new administration and doesn't allow launch preparations to continue, that's another month of possible delay to the target launch date. As I noted earlier, for Artemis 1, the aft assemblies were placed on the mobile launcher right around this time four years ago, and then NASA waited. In that case, after they started stacking the other eight segments beginning in January 2021, the boosters were topped out in early March. In that case, they were waiting for arrival of the Artemis 1 core stage. This time, all the SLS hardware is available to EGS to process. If NASA gave EGS the go-ahead to press with fully stacking the boosters and starting the stacking clock, they could be ready for the Artemis 2 core stage somewhere around or after New Year's. The interim cryogenic propulsion stage would need to be moved over to the multi-payload processing facility for hydrazine fueling, but that fueling wouldn't be necessary until just before the boosters and core stage were mated. If they were really going to start stacking around now, maybe SLS and EGS would be in a position to roll out to the pad and conduct tanking tests by the springtime. There's a lot of work that needs to happen after the elements are bolted together and before rollout. Most of the launch preparations for the vehicle and the mobile launcher are completed in the VAB, and most of the SLS systems in particular need to be in a launch configuration for a tanking test. So all that needs to happen before rollout. The stages need to be plugged into each other and into the ML umbilicals. The command and control between the firing room, VAB, mobile launcher, and vehicle need to be checked out, and the vehicle systems need to be prepared for tanking, 
which includes leak checks, main propulsion system functional tests, RS-25 engine flight readiness tests, and so on. If NASA decides to hold stacking after the aft assemblies to wait for a heat shield decision by the end of the year, the earliest the boosters probably can be ready is mid to late February, in which case a tanking test is probably closer to the end of the spring or early summer. In other news and notes for the week, prime contractor Airbus posted a picture with a short note about production of ESM-4, the European service module that would fly on Artemis 4. After completing ESM-3 at the end of the summer, Airbus is continuing to work towards the goal of delivering one ESM per year and this shows installation of one of the propellant system components. There's still a lot more work to do, but Airbus has already taken delivery of the primary structures for the 5th and 6th units, and is preparing to finish and deliver those down the line too. Related to Artemis 3, SpaceX is completing preparations for the 6th Starship flight test. The launch was targeted for Monday, November 18th, and as of this recording had moved to Tuesday the 19th, but they are keeping an eye on the weather. The flight test includes an on-orbit Raptor restart demonstration on the ship, which is crucial to orbital flights, and orbital flight testing, which is crucial to the Artemis schedule. Once it does happen, that demonstration and the flight test results will be something to look for next week. The upcoming change in administrations should have minimal disruptions to the Starship schedule, since it is a proprietary SpaceX effort. The change in administration also has not clarified the Starship schedule for 2025 or beyond. It appears that the first orbital flight test will come early next year, but what's still unclear is the steps from there to the propellant transfer demo. But that's only one part of the Artemis 3 plan. The Artemis 3 schedule for either the official September 2026 launch date or a date more likely in 2027 depends heavily on the status of Orion and SLS both of which are reportedly in some doubt now, with Elon Musk soon beginning work on an efficiency review of the federal government. Immediate plans to send U.S. astronauts back to the moon and land on the surface are based on the use of Orion and SLS as the government-provided crew transportation system. If White House support for those elements is withdrawn, it's unlikely a crash program alternative could be ready in less than two years. The joint confidence level estimate made in late 2023 was for Starship HLS to be orbiting the moon, ready for Artemis 3, in early 2028. In that case, that would provide more time for a crash program that didn't use Orion or SLS, but would still only be about three years away. Under the Constitution, Trump only has one four-year term left, so February 2028 would give them a year's worth of schedule margin from there until the end of Trump's second term. Taking a step back to look at the presidential transition at a higher level, if there's any truth to the reports about changes to SLS specifically, or Artemis in general, as allergic as some folks are to politics, sometimes you can't escape it. I put out a short introductory video on that, and we'll see where that storyline goes over the next many months, but there's a watch list for this too. A couple of things to look for are confirmation that Musk's advisory body intends to look at big changes for Artemis, and also any signs of opposition within congressional delegations to having their programs cut or terminated and losing jobs in their districts. We're still two months away from January 20th, so public statements may be more one-sided for now. We'll see. In terms of timetables, that Government Efficiency Department slash Advisory Group was given until mid-2026, which would be a long time practically half of Trump's last presidential term. The budgets will also be a watch item, especially if Trump's budget team pursues a court challenge to the 1974 Impoundment Control Act. If so, court proceedings might also take a little while, but then programs could be in limbo for the duration of that too. The question is to what extent the new administration might withhold funds. Obviously for these videos, it would be specifically for the Artemis programs. We'd also be looking to see whether the majorities in Trump's party would oppose specific policy initiatives or not. Washington typically avoids short-term pain, but the incoming team has suggested that could be necessary to making improvements long-term. Program changes would have big impacts and possibly immediate impacts to the future of Artemis. 
So as I said, at least until it's clear what the plans and timelines are, it's going to be hard to completely escape the politics when talking about what happened and what could happen next. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative.